You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Sponsorship provided by AWeber at aweber.com slash phillytech. Get Flywheel, optimized WordPress hosting at getflywheel.com. Wistia.com at wistia.com. And Zoho Mail. Hey everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Social Media Addicts Podcast. I'm Seth, that's Jody, that's Howard. <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm in the dark tonight. Yes, Howard is being kind of going emo look right now. So. Exactly. Jody looks as radiant as usual. She's kind of going with the 80s hair style with the hair off to the side. Well, at least I have hair. I was going to say, I would love to have the hair off to the side. I would do anything <laughs> to have the hair off to the side. I'll share. <laughs> I'm losing mine. It's just one wearing a hat. Yeah, I know, right? Onwards and upwards, guys. It's rolling. So let's quickly thank our sponsors right off the bat. Um, Wistia, Aweber, Flywheel, and Zoho Mail. Thank you for sponsoring us. You'll hear about the more on it in the show. Also, if you feel like patronizing us and helping out the show, go to patreon.com slash phillytechorg. Give what you can per month and we appreciate any help you can get. So, how about this blizzard that we're having? (laughs) Blizzard, right. Blizzard is the blizzard that involves snow. Um, I think what was so funny about this coverage, especially for us in South Jersey, it was like all hands on deck. We are going to have more bread, eggs, and milk needed to be purchased from the supermarkets. It was nuts. I don't know how much French toast people needed to make. But in spite of that, I mean, my office, they were kicking us out. They were like, you have to leave Monday afternoon. Um, the chamber that I'm on the board of, they canceled their major major event. Um, everybody went crazy. They were like, this is a done deal. We are so definitely going to have all this snow. And we got bubkis here. We bear, I think in my backyard there might have been a half an inch, maybe an inch. Um, but almost nothing. But it's the weather. I mean, that's why they predict it, because they're trying to help us, right? Help us? In the last time we got six inches. We actually got some snow, but not enough to call school. Yeah, but in all fairness, guys, I mean, realistically, you saw what happened up in Massachusetts. Oh, yeah, and my we, sister lives there. Okay, well, you know, had that swerved yeah. a little bit to the south, we would have been inundated like they were. So um, that was what the forecasters were looking at. That's what the predictions were based on. And we were just very fortunate that it went north instead of coming south. Yeah, and the thing that I thought was really interesting about this, there are certain lessons that we've learned. First lesson is school is called not by the superintendent but by the bus companies. And the bus companies, their major motivation isn't how many days of school will there be tacked on at the end, how many holidays. It's what liability can we handle. So they're looking at it saying if there's a chance of any snow or ice or rain or small kittens, um, we are going to call school. Um, Back in my day when I was a youth... They didn't call school until there was actual snow on the ground. I, I feel like an old man when I talk about that, but um, I really wish that they would actually, like, ha- ha- since I have kids and a wife who works in the schools, I like it when they actually call school because there is weather, not because there may be weather. So but, Howard, may- I think realistically, I don't think it's so much, I mean, probably a little bit to do with the liability, but I think it really has more to do with how much time they think it's going to take to scrape off the bu- buses. Because they can't. Legally, and you know, in New Jersey, you can't drive with snow on top of your vehicle. You have to get that off. So that that's a time-consuming process. Absolutely, but they could make that call if the buses have to start their engines at 5 in the morning. They could make that call at 3 in the morning. And yeah, we would all be asleep, but guess what? If you wake me up to say no school, I'm going right back to bed and I'm saying, kids, go to bed. Otherwise, it's business as usual because by 3 in the morning, we all knew nothing was happening. And that's the part where... They called it, they literally, there was a half day called Monday morning. Nothing had fallen yet. We were looking around going, there's no snow. They canceled, they basically said half day as of nothing had fallen. So I understand there have been incidents, I get it, but let the snow start to fall before you start calling down everything. I mean, honestly, but even up until this time, we're we're on a higher elevation than you guys down in the lowlands. Uh Uh-uh. (laughs) <laughs> so you think. <laughs> it's flat in South Jersey. I mean... Pancake flat. 
flat. Not almost South Jersey's that flat, but no, I mean you're, you're more inland. You do get a little bit um, colder. I think you get you tend to get more snow on that side of ninety five. It's a ninety five car north and west areas, but um, the thing is, is that even with six inches, people don't like close six inches. They usually laugh at that and say, "Make it down to the bus stop or drive yourself to school." So, oh, Joel's making an appearance. Hi, Joel. <laughs> Well, and the interesting thing on Facebook and on Twitter, everyone's sort of being snarky about all of the different things, like this wasn't really snow and so on and so forth. That I just sort of, it, I almost wanted to say, look, I'm glad that there was no snow. I didn't have to shovel anything. There was no, you know, effort on my part. All I had to do was just sort of go, okay, well, you know, no snow. Um, but you know, it was almost like. No one was satisfied unless we had gotten the biggest snowstorm ever. Um, and you know what? We'll get one. And when we do, we'll all be like, oh, my God, we're ready with our French toast. Yeah, the storm of the century in New York. <laughs> yeah. But don't we have some stories to talk about, guys? I mean, this is like stories. a nice story. We're all like whining about not having a snowstorm. I was actually disappointed in all the hype. I was like, all right, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And there's like nothing. I'm like six inches. I'm like, really? <laughs> That's what she said. Okay, three things media companies could learn from the White House. Who wants to take that one? Our... Oh, sure. Well, I think one of the things that uh, we definitely learn from this is, um, look, the White House wants to be transparent. They have a speech written in advance, so why not put it out there for people to get in advance? This way, it's not just the rebuttal that can have a chance to see the speech in advance. It's all the press, and it's social media, and let's just put it out there. So the White House put out the speech on Medium and said, here you go. Go take a look at it before we even uh, say it. Um, I think that's that, dumb. <laughs> I do. I think it's dumb. I mean, what well, I don't think they should put the speech out to anybody. I think they should have the speech, and the uh, Republican rebuttal should be based on what they just heard and actually be a rebuttal like a debate, not a you have time to think about it. But so that it's not just the Republicans getting a copy of it or the opposing party getting a copy of it. You know, Give it to everybody. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, so you want people to pay attention to what you have to say. If you publish your speech ahead of time, why do I have to watch it? That's just dumb. For inflection. It's, it's anticlimactic, and honestly, I am 100% the opposite of what this article says. I don't think that this is something we want to learn from the White House. I think it's taking a lesson from the White House and understanding what they did wrong. Because I, I just don't think it was effective for them. So I would say that the transparency is really something that trumps that. They're, they're going to put that out there. They control the message. So whether you're seeing that message or reading it or however you're getting it, they're the one controlling it. They're not waiting for CNN or Fox News or whatever news source people tune into. They're not waiting for that spin to control the story. They're saying this is the root, the authorship of the story, um, which, you know, whether they put it out there on time or not, that's the root of the story. Whether they put it out ahead of time or, or afterwards is irrelevant. It's, you know, whether it's transparency or not transparency. You know, honestly, here's what I think it does. I think it makes it look like he's reading a canned speech as opposed to speaking and, and giving, you know, his presentation and then publishing what the speech was after the fact. I don't need a president who's going to stand up there and read something to me. Whether he is or isn't, that's a whole different story. I would mm -hmm. rather have the presentation and then have the um, information afterwards. To me, this this just appears to be you could you could train a monkey to do that. Oops. Right, but this is that? how they've been giving speeches <laughs> for over 150 years. That the speech has been written in advance and given to the opposing I'm party. Just, but I think this is dumb, and I don't I don't think this is something to emulate. All right, so two against one. Um, we think it's smart. You think it's dumb. Let's thank our sponsors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who are also very smart. Who are smart, and they do video. Wistia is a video hosting and analyst platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use them here, as you, as you all can see. We have really good video when the Hangouts want to behave. It's not on Wistia. It's on Google. I'm watching you, Google. Anyway, so check them out at Wistia.com. It's W-I-S-T-I-A.com. The product's awesome. They have some great tutorials on lighting, and as you can see, Howard must have been reading Wistia blog because he's playing with uh, lighting. The people at Wistia will be very proud of you, Howard. Thank you. Check them out at Wistia.com and tell them we sent you. So, Tumblr. 
Tumblr, Tumblr, Tumblr. Who uses Tumblr here? Who really or... cares about Tumblr? <laughs> oh, well, once upon a time, I used Tumblr. Um, I actually, uh, a friend of mine and I do a little joke with his daughter. We call it Fierce Eliana. So we have a Tumblr for all kinds of meme sayings with her, one of her baby pictures that looks like the most angry baby we've ever seen. So, But other than that, no Tumblr. I think Tumblr is good for like one-off things or small projects. But I also feel like it, it can also be used, you know, people use it for their blog and they just put a subdomain over it and and it is a blog that like blog that think of dot com is on Tumblr. It's because I guess it's an easy publishing platform. You only have to think about getting things going. But as a web designer, I think it's the worst idea possible because you don't own your links that are coming to you. They go to Tumblr, and they don't you know whatever. It's all inside baseball. But <laughs> I, I, but anyhow, Tumblr announces like a creator network, an agency style platform that matches brands with users' content. So clearly, Yahoo who owns Tumblr feels like there's some. They're, tum these, they're these Tumblr celebrities, and that there's some value to having a network for these creators to meet up with agencies and do business, sort of like what they do on YouTube. So obviously there's a reason for it, and I think it's kind of cr creative, and it might be turned into something if you are big on Tumblr. I mean, I do know some people that really do like Tumblr and really use it and find the content delivery on it. I mean, I check it out weekly. It's not one of my go-tos every day, but I'll go there weekly. Like I go to Reddit weekly, and I follow a bunch of people on there that I think are interesting. I mean, it's a neat concept. It's just not my it's not my go-to Android blogs or whatever. So, well, I think about it this way: if you are a Tumblr creator, and what's great about Tumblr is random people can make some good content, put it up there with minimal friction. If you're a Tumblr creator, Tumblr basically just said we're going to pony up some dollars because we're going to take the great content you're creating, we're going to match it up with some people who want to pay to have great content created, and this is, um, I don't want to say a last-ditch effort, but it's definitely an effort for people to say, oh, that Tumblr thing, I'm going to make some more content for it because maybe it, it will get syndicated or purchased for some brand's channel that hasn't created anything. Huh. I mean, it's true. But, um, but oh, I'm yawn. <laughs> Speaking of which... You know, um, you guys saw the article about Google Plus, right? Yes. More predictions on the future of Google Plus in 2015. Yeah. I love Plus. I mean, I, we're all on Google Plus right now using the Hangout feature. I think it's a great tool. I have slowed down with my posting on Google Plus just the sheer amount of time it takes to curate content. But I mean, I know Jerry posts there constantly. I see Jerry post at least once a day there. I see Howard up there, you know, every now and then. So, I mean, I, I find it useful. I find that it is a valid network. Whether that's going to grow or this going to be changes, you know, only time will tell. What do you guys think? I love it. I, I think Google Plus is really refreshing, and I use it completely differently than I use Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, I've connected with people ordinarily I wouldn't have met otherwise through Google Plus, um, connections of connections. Um, I've seen some terrific, interesting people and have been able to, to follow them and learn from them. And um, I, I, I hope that it's going to be around. But, you know, ever since um, Vic Gundotra, is that how you pronounce it? Ever since he left the company, they've been talking about the fact that um, apparently they're contemplating putting less and less resources behind Google+. And I guess the question is whether it's one of Google's failed concepts or whether it's going to blossom and flourish. But I think overall, we all know that it's going to continue to go through evolutions. What do you think, Howard? Well, I, Google Plus is interesting because um, initially when it came out, I saw it as this is just to have a social layer on everything. So people don't really hang out on Google Plus. There are some areas, there are some groups, there are some certain places where that where Hangout actually happens and Hangouts actually happen. Um, but it's not sort of a, I'm going to Google Plus right now. It's, oh, I happen to be doing something and I'm, I'm commenting and it just happens to be using my Google profile. So I really hope that what Google does is it actually leans into that. It makes it less of a, I have to go to Google Plus and more integrated in a way that just says, well, you're commenting so we're using your Google profile. Um, and stop trying to out Facebook Facebook, actually really innovate with it. Um, make it easy to plug into websites. Make it easy for it to be um, your identity. 
and actually use it as a way of securing the network and having uh, some authorship with it, which is some of the things I actually really liked about Google Plus when it first came out. Um, I wish that they would the really show, develop right? those features. Author show went out the window. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. Whatever, but I mean. Right, but ID, ID really is something that they could uh, lean into, um, not just for hey, I'm Howard, but also this is an ID that I can use so that I'm not making profiles on every single website, platform, whatever. I could actually say Google Plus is a secure, controlled way where that information is not being sold off. Except it's when they tried to do that, Howard, I mean, that lasted for about six minutes because they told people they had to use their real identity and everybody was up in arms because they wanted to use pseudonyms. Oh, yeah, I agree. They didn't do... They started with a great concept mm -hmm. and they didn't get the name thing right. Um, I think there's a really strong way that you can... Um, basically say, hey, this is me, Howard, but the pseudonym I'm using is this. And that's totally fine. And if you want to be known for a pseudonym, let people find you for that. But the idea is that Google didn't want people hiding behind a pseudonym. And I think there's a big difference between uh, someone saying, like, Weird Al, going as Weird Al, as opposed to Al Yankovic. So that's a case where if you say, go search for Al Yankovic, yeah, he's a popular celebrity and you could probably figure it out. But he wants to be known as Weird Al. That's his thing. So Google didn't make it easy for him to be Weird Al Yankovic. He had to be Al Yankovic with like weird somewhere. <laughs> well, speaking of weird, <laughs> I think it's time for another sponsor break. And why is that weird, Jerry? I, I don't know. It just seemed like a good segue at the time. Yeah. Our, anyhow, our weird, wonderful, incredible, great sponsor is Flywheel. Our managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies. Flywheel's Flywheel makes it simple to build, launch, and manage client sites with an easy-to-use dashboard built from the ground up with modern web design, the web, with a modern web designer at mind. They have not only backups, blazing fast load times, which I can vouch for. We had fully tech on a, a competitor's server, and it was slow as molasses. Put them on Flywheel, and it's zooming. So check them out mm -hmm. over at flywheel.com and tell them we say you know, um, Don't tell them we call them weird. <laughs> no, we didn't call them weird. It was just a weird segue. It was a very weird segue. Well, speaking uh, of weird, weird segues, you know, like men and women and Pinterest. <laughs> What's that? Now the sex is on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> really? So um, I guess I'll, I'll jump in. Data from Comscore says that out of Pinterest, 72.5 million U.S. visitors, 71% are women. So apparently Pinterest is trying to get more men into the act. But, you know, I'll tell you what. What's really kind of cool about Pinterest is that when you put something on Pinterest, it um, seems to get picked up very quickly by the search engines. It does. It I'm does. just saying. And one, one thing that's funny, it, one thing that's weird is, I mean, I do pin on Pinterest a lot of, a lot of um, infographics and whatnot. For some reason, I have 3,500 followers on Pinterest. I don't know why. Not that interesting, but I don't even know how many followers I have, and I don't really care. Why? Um, why would you know that? Um, it says pin pinners that like you or something like that, and there's like 3,500 follow people. I'm like, okay, that's. I wonder how many I have. I don't even know. But the interesting thing about Pinterest is uh, this is kind of funny an anecdote. Is anecdote? An 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 whatever. An anecdote. Anecdote is that fully tech is pinterestcom org. If you go there and log in under Philly Tech Org, it's all Jody and all dogs. It's like the whole thing is covered. It's me? <laughs> You're the only person, you and Howard are the only other two people that follow Philly Tech Org follows on Pinterest. Oh, and dear God. <laughs> dog pictures. I do do a lot of dogs and sometimes cats, but mostly dogs. It's, it's literally like Animal Farm. I love dogs. Yeah, but I can't use that account because I kind of get overwhelmed by the amount of dogs on there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. I have other boards. I also have motorcycles. And motorcycles. I, yeah, but still, there's a lot of mail and wall. So, Howard, do you use, do you use Pinterest a lot? Um, I don't. Um, I From time to time, I will use it uh, if I'm looking for something or searching. Uh, put some photography up there. Mostly what I follow on Pinterest are different photographers, different ideas for shoots and things like that. Um, but uh, it's... It's. I don't want to say it's. I don't. I don't find anything wrong with it. It's just not part of my daily things to do. Um, but here's the interesting part and the great big but. They are working on their search algorithm 
so that uh, if I search for something, it says, oh, Howard's a guy, so we're going to try to find more things that guys post. And knowing that actually makes me want to use it, uh, for me at least, a little bit less. Um, because I don't think men are necessarily better curators than women. I actually think women are fabulous curators, and I would love if there was a checkbox that I could check that says, do not, ser do not preference male posts over female posts. Preference, like, pinned posts, things that are more popular than others. So hearing that they're going to try to uh, work more male feed or more male uh, pins into what I see is kind of a bummer for me. Amen, amen. Jerry, a, a follow-up? Agreed. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm finding it interesting that Twitter is finally catching up to the 90s. In the 90s, yeah. Twitter <laughs> now will let you shoot and upload videos from your mobile device. Up to, I think it's up to... They're doing a video service where you can have up to 10 minutes of video on a tweet. Right, they're doing it, but it's uh, 30 seconds mobile. For mobile, which just makes a little bit more sense, but still... Twitter is kind of trying to take over Instagram and Vine, which they and, know, right? Yeah. And, and YouTube, all in one fell swoop. But isn't, isn't, isn't Vine, like, kind of Twitter? It is Twitter. It's owned by Twitter. Yeah. So how does this differ from Vine? Vine, six seconds. Ten seconds. This is 30 seconds. This is, like, almost three Vines. Exactly. More than three Vines. Wow. No, less than three Vines. Five Vines. Well, is it, oh, it's 30 seconds. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I was thinking it was 15 seconds. Oh, well, that's a non-story. Let's move on. Let's think of third spot. <laughs> <laughs> and now for something really weird. And now for something completely different. <laughs> Email How marketing by Weber. They're local to the Philadelphia region, which we love. They've been in business for 16 years. They help entrepreneurs, agencies, and small businesses connect with their customers through email marketing. Check them out at aweber.com. And if you go to aweber.com slash Philly Tech and sign up, you can get the first month for just a dollar. A little swing in my hand. Just a dollar. So check them out, aweber.com slash Philly Tech. So Snapchat. How many of you guys do, do um, Snapchat? Nope. Hate it. Don't, don't have a need. But I've been starting to get lots of clients who are asking me about what can they do with Snapchat? What are the different things that they can do? And sort of thinking strategically, unless they have some kind of expiring offer, the same way you would do like a deal a day site where at the end of the day it's gone, if they're not doing something that they really want to expire, they have to use Snapchat as a way to say, we want your attention right now because if you don't, you're going to miss it. So if they're not doing that, it doesn't seem like a really good fit for them. Um, the other that thing that's sort of the... Powered? I mean, isn't it younger skewed? Oh, it's definitely younger skewed, but um, it is starting to pick up a little bit. More people are playing with it. They're starting to go, oh, what's this Snapchat thing? Um, but it is definitely more younger skewed. Um, the thing that I actually saw them launch that gives me pause to even recommend it to people is their new Discover service, where they're getting in the business of creating media with their partners to say, here's content. Because um, Snapchat's going to have a monetization money problem, and actually they need some money to continue to exist, not just venture cap. Um, and considering Twitter could do what Snapchat does in about two weeks of coding by saying we're going to use direct messages and we're going to say a direct message has an expiration date. They could effectively duplicate the service. Um, and Twitter already has an ad platform and followers in a much bigger, uh, more flexible service. Um, I'm curious to see what Snapchat does because I still don't see a way for them to make money. Um, We'll see. So anyhow, this was, speaking of things, yes, I was going to say, speaking of things expiring and deflating, either of you guys watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> I, I watch the commercial. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> deflating balls. On the subject of deflating. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting to watch the Super Bowl and, and be on social media at the same time. I... I think social media makes it a lot more interesting. It does. It does. Especially when you watch it after the fact and you fast forward, fast forward through the whole game only to watch the commercials. You know how hard that is? <laughs> to get your brain to contemplate, let's not stop at the actual show. Let's watch the ads instead. 
speaking of ads, there was one really distasteful one. Um, Nationwide did a horrible, horrible, horrible commercial about kids who die before having any of these milestones happen. And I mean, I looked at my wife, I looked at Meredith, I'm like, that was depressing. Yeah, really. I mean, it, it's supposed to be a family-oriented event. I don't think that they intended for it to have the negative reaction that it did. But um, I, I just, I don't know what the heck they were thinking. I never had a first kiss. I never got the measles. I never counted that was one of them. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the, you know which one was the most shared ad, though? What, which one? The Budweiser ad with the lost dog. No, I, that, that, it, it, the dog. It has to be the dog. <laughs> yeah. I love the dog. It was, so, it was a cute commercial, but it was like, okay, they did that, something like that last year. Yeah, well, I'm, the Budweiser commercials are, are heartwarming, beautifully filmed, very touching music. I think they, they do a phenomenal job. But um, you know which one had the biggest increase in terms of volume of positive discussion? Which one? The Like a Girl ad. Oh, yeah, and that's from the summer. Yeah. I, I guess. I, you know. Yeah, they... They did that, that like a girl ad was from originally aired in the summer, and they just brought it back. It was a great ad then, and why not bring it back now? Yeah. yeah. And McDonald's also enjoyed a big increase. And um, so it, it's just kind of interesting how you can get almost. You, you remember in the old days, you used to have a commercial, and you used to watch the Nielsen's, and you used to see, you know, who was listening to your your advertising, who wasn't watching your advertising. And then you you give people these um, diaries, and they'd have to record it. Who even needs that anymore? All you have to do is monitor the social stream, and you can Absolutely. pretty much find out what's going on. I think the funniest part that I found from seeing Facebook the day later was how Facebook resurfaced certain posts. And it was almost like this person posted it right after this commercial because of the comment that they made. So even though they didn't say which commercial, they were like, wow, that was not what I was expecting at the Super Bowl party for a commercial. It was like, well, they just saw the nationwide commercial. Like they, It was just interesting to see the comments mm -hmm. and know what they were watching at that moment. It's sort of a reverse uh, way of what Seth was doing, which is fast-forwarding to see the commercial. This was just seeing the comments and assuming what commercial it was. Um, <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, did you guys watch the um, Katy Perry halftime? I thought she was great. I, I haven't seen it yet. I'm DVR'd on the halftime show. That was my transportation place. Okay, so my question after you do watch it is whether you're saying to her to fall when she gets on the star. I mean... Oh she looked to me like she was going to fall off. That's all I can say. She's going off a dear life. Anyhow, from, from deflating balls to exploding kittens. Exploding <laughs> kittens. This is my story. And why? Because I love kittens. Um, so up until about two weeks ago, the fastest Kickstarter and the most funded Kickstarter was Reading Rainbow with LeVar Burton. And that was awesome, and lots of people backed it, and it was lots of fun. Well... Exploding Kittens is a card game. It's a Kickstarter project, and this card game is by the same illustrator that does The Oatmeal, the popular internet cartoon that is The Oatmeal. Well, this Kickstarter was funded within 20 minutes, and it was 1,000% funded within an hour, which is ridiculous for a card game. And now, two weeks in, it is the most backed and most funded Kickstarter project in Kickstarter's history. And they still have 15 days to keep getting funding, so who knows what else is going to happen. Um, I'm in for both decks, both the original sort of kid-friendly deck, ages 7 and up, and the not-safe-for-work deck for ages 30 and up, which they put in, which I thought was 30 is a pretty big age for not-safe-for-work. 5237470 Well, it'll be at least $20 more by tomorrow, and that is because of the Yermish bump. It's a new thing I'm coining here. Uh, They'll get one more follower, one more backer. So, so did you get? Did you get the um, um, collector's deck? Which one did you get, Howard? I got the. There's a pack that has uh, the, the both. The originally it was the standard deck, and then a not safe for work expansion pack. Well, yeah. because they hit their stretch goals before they had them even published. Um, they made it so that it's two full decks. So I got the two pack, um, and by two pack I mean two versions: the kid friendly and then the adult friendly. But you didn't get the collector deck or the deck of legend. 
No, I don't need to go that crazy um, over exploding kittens, but uh, I am looking forward to it. Well, very cool. I hope you enjoy your exploding kittens when they arrive. It will When it arrives, it will be a pick on this show. I will have the deck with me. Cool. So from, from the flitting footballs to exploding kittens to our sponsor. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> that is weird. Uh, no home email, professional email for your business. Professional email built from the ground up, designed for businesses. Low cost professional email built with business class features in mind. So check them out at zoho.com slash mail. All right, picks of the week. So obviously, um, Howard can't talk about exploding kins anymore because he hasn't gotten the deck. But right. I will talk about appear.in. It is a one click video conferencing tool, it, it enables you to pretty much do a Google Hangout with eight people. You don't have to have an account to log in, and it runs completely through your browser. Now, I had a very funny um, trial with this with two of my friends. One was on a Mac, one was on a PC, and it sounds like a bad bar joke, but anyhow. It does. <laughs> anyhow. Well, the Mac guy could hear me and see me, and we could talk, but the guy on the PC could hear me and see me and we could talk, but the guy on the Mac couldn't see the other PC. It was very confusing. But... I have tried it since, and as soon as like, they ironed it out, it's completely free. And I don't know what their monetization model is, anything. There's an API, so you can develop on top of it. But essentially, it's using WebRTC, which is a new video technology. It only runs in Chrome and Firefox, and I think Opera. So if you're using IE or Safari, try Chrome. Yeah. I'm checking out, you can, also, you can also actually get your own um, room and claim the room. So I, we have um, peer.in slash Seth um, peer.in slash Philly Tech and you can also lock the room so that the person has to knock first before coming in so that you can actually control the flow it's neat I'll tell all your eyes at me Jody it's neat yes. I'm glad they have to knock first <laughs> I'm just wondering what you'd be doing that you would have no. to knock but okay okay someone might have to knock <laughs> I'm not I, on, yes. I don't have the page open. It, it'll text me saying so and so wants to chat with you. It's good for like sales calls and stuff like that. So, and an honorable mention is Cyberdust. It's a Mark Cuban project. It's it, it's ephemeral marketing, sort of like um, Snapchat. In some it's way. Mark Cuban Snapchat. Exactly. I just think it's a kind of neat tool. Are either of you guys on there? I sent you invites to try it out. Cool. That's right. I uh, for me I already don't like Snapchat very much as a personal tool so um, a, co a cologne isn't where I'm going next. <laughs> I found with these it's hard because you're in a conversation the person doesn't respond till the next day you forget what you wrote beforehand you can't go back and refer back to the old message because it doesn't exist. it's expired. <laughs> ah, I forgot what I said. I a conversation with the guy is like all right he wrote back okay let's make it happen and I wrote back and I'm like. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh no, that's awful. <laughs> Anyhow, so Jody, what is Canary Home Security? Okay, so um, I'm going to say it was almost a year ago. Um, this is one of those Indiegogo um, kind of Kickstarter campaigns. And um, I bought a Canary, and it finally arrived. This is one of the first out of production. So basically, it's um, a home security device. It's um, internet-based. It has a camera. Um, it also has sound. It has a siren. It's, I will let you know because I have not set it up yet, but it's supposed to be easy to set up and to arm. It also can be, um, the information can be picked up from um, a cell phone. You know, there's no monthly fee to utilize it, like, unlike a lot of these other services where you have to pay for a monthly fee. Um, what else? Oh, it also monitors your home health. It tells you what the temperature is, the humidity, and um, two-way camera. It's pretty cool. Or one-way camera, actually, two-way video, audio. Here's a question for you, Jody. How many times will the dog set it off? Oh, it's constant, Seth. It's like a, like a video stream, so you can watch what's going on. Those arm arm while the dogs are roaming free in the house because they'll drive your neighbors nuts. What's that? No, no, I don't think it'll do that. 
Well, I don't know. I'll let you know once I set it up. But um, basically, it says whether you're a parent, a pet owner, or a frequent traveler, Canary helps you make smart decisions when something's wrong and feel connected when everything's right. From break-ins to earthquakes to unsafe temperatures to nosy landlords, Canary gives you the power to protect the people and places that matter most. Canary. Mm-hmm. And I'll let you know, I also ordered an Echo, so they're not supposed to be coming out till March. That's the Amazon um, voice-activated... Um, really? What? You bought an Echo? I, I ordered one. I pre-ordered it. Cool. So... Yeah, oh, I like that should be things. awesome. Tall cylindrical things, you know. It's like echo, <laughs> canary. It is what what you... All right, Howard. What is the mag bounce and mag sphere? And mag... all right, so um, I take pictures, and so I use a flash. And whenever I use a flash, one of the problems is bare flash looks terrible. Bang! Oh, it should give me a little Don't pop here. There we go. Bare flash looks terrible, and the problem with bare flash is you want to make that light bigger and diffuse. So one of the projects, a uh, Kickstarter project about a year and a half ago, was this product called Mag Bounce. Where what they did was they um, this little rubberized thing attaches to your flash head. Any flash, you don't doesn't matter if it's a Nikon or camera or Canon or anything else. Well, their second Kickstarter project was for the first thing was like a bounce card. So traditionally, a lot of flashes have this little tiny piece of white card. And it does almost nothing, but it's a little bit more than nothing. So what they came out with was the mag bounce, which means instead of just saying we have a, it's now a very big flash card, and it's made of neoprene rubber, so it's really easy to work with, and it attaches via magnets. So here's the magnets, bang, it's on there, really easy to work with, very, very durable. You're not worried about, you know, messing things up. If you flip the flash this way, because that happens a lot when you turn your camera, this Flips that way. It also lets you, if you want to, because it basically attaches in a rotation, if you want to bounce it off the back wall, you can bounce it off the back wall. Pretty cool. Well, there's more. But wait, there's more. There is also the situation where you're trying to diffuse the light in front of you, not just do the little bounce card. And so lots of people get these little plastic, what are called dome diffusers. Dome diffusers stink. They basically cut the light down from like full light to like a quarter of the light. Well, what if you only could cut, I feel like a Ginsu Knives commercial, but what if you only could cut the light by about a half a stop to a full stop as opposed to two and a half to three stops? Bang. Mag bounce. Well, what mag bounce does is it does the diffusion trick. <laughs> it does the diffusion trick in this little bouncy thing. You're not worried. You can, like, smash it against the camera, and it's no big deal. It pops on and off really, really simple. You throw this in your bag, crush it, no problem. Right on there. All of this for the low, low price of oh, I forget how much they cost. Um, I believe that the I believe that the bounce is like fifty dollars, and I think the sphere is also about fifty bucks. They did a Kickstarter project that included um, I think it was like eighty dollars for both. I did the thing that also included another one of these grips, and I got a couple other things because I have. I don't have one flash, I have like five. So I have these for all the different flashes I use. Um, lots of fun. I'm really thrilled with my little Mag Bounce and Mag Sphere. I'm really excited. I can't wait. They showed up in my mail today, so I'm thrilled to go take some pictures in the next couple weeks. Those are Mag Bounces because they are durable. You gave me the hiccups. <laughs> That's all. I know, on that note, everyone, thanks for joining the <laughs> wacky edition of the Social Media Acts podcast. I'm Seth, that's Jody, and that's Howard. And we'll catch you next week, hopefully, if we can all make it on time for the podcast. <laughs> not not right. So, see you guys later. All right, take care, everybody. Yes. Yeah.